Oh, thanks a lot. Some trip, tips and tricks for the everyday CMAG user. So as usually my, my welcome slides, um, if there is code, there should not be so much, but there is slideware. There are personal opinions, which I always take, happy to take afterwards. And no universal solution. There are edge cases, exceptions to rules, and so on. Geek factor is 1.5 of 5, I think, because I address not build engineers. It's, it's, it's for everyone, hopefully. And about me, I have now a new link for my blog, and it's afterwards at noaccept.dev. Who else has a domain for the blog with a C++ keyword? <laughs> no? So if you want, we can probably make a subdomain. Come to me. We can fix it. OK, some tips for everyday CMake user. Um, use presets is the very first thing. And yeah, there are Rebose and there are JSON. Some people like to have this as an excuse to not use them, but you shouldn't. Because you can include files, and then the big pile of text can become less. And this is what my top level uh, preset file looks like usually, which I start when I start a new project. I copy it from somewhere. And I have my Ninja presets, the Xcode, and the MSVC one. And it gives me for all the platform the build support. Except for embedded, where we need two chains, but this is can easily be added. So you can re reuse presets also. So if you look at my Xcode one, it just inherits a base preset. So all the boilerplate goes in this base preset. And this is, this is then cleaned up. So no need to be afraid when I open the file, because it's easy readable. As I said, in the base preset for the configuration step, you can add whatever you want. You, you make it hidden that the ID doesn't show it to you. You select the base generator. My one is the Ninja Multiconfig, because this is what works everywhere. And then you do the, the rest of the setup as, as you want to have it. And then you just reuse it. It's, it's nice. So the build preset, it's a little bit more robust than I wish. But even here, I can use um, the configuration and then debug. And, 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 and then I have a, a build preset for the release step. This is my, my naming convention. And, and all I do is to pass in the configuration, either debug or release for the actual build. And for ctest, it's the same. I have my, my, my preset. And it inherits a test preset that tells you, shall I stop on the error or not? So the boilerplate goes away. And then the, the other one can actually uh, inherit this one. So the base one, the release one, can inherit the debug, and you just change the configuration. So that's pretty nice. If you haven't never used it, this is the command line. And I just added the fresh to lay out this, this nicely. But it's basically the configuration. You select which is your preset, Xcode, MSVC, Ninja. Then you make build your preset. And then see test preset, which is awesome, because you don't need to go to any directory anymore, like you need it when you do the say, plain C test. So this is, this is worth the, the thing. In average, my, if you, and you couldn't look it up at GitHub, my flavor for, for the compiler has about 50 to 60 line JSON. That's totally manageable, and you write it once. So, so that's it. Um, and do not wait as an as a argument, yeah, we will use preset when they solve the JSON problem, because what you're actually saying, you have built your own tooling around it. There is no IDE support, but it's a housemate solution. And no, use preset, you have full IDE support. It's, it's worth it. So don't, don't wait for this. OK, then what's the next thing? Multi-config generators. You have already seen one. So what is a multi-config generator? So of course, you should use presets, but just to make the point, CMake, Generator, Ninja, Multiconfig, you give it a build folder and the source directory. And then in the build, you say which build folder it is, and you tell it which configuration, debug or release. And then you would do the CMake. But this is the multi-config generator. And why is this important? Because we have three multi-config generators in the CMake toolbox. And this is Ninja, Multiconfig, Xcode, and Visual Studio. Xcode and Visual Studio app in nature multi-config generators. You should use them as such, because otherwise you have troubles for yourself, and that's not worth it. So use multi-config generators. In this context, avoid CMake build type. That's a legacy from I don't know when. 
My, part was, my beard was not gray. Don't use it. If you see something like this, Visual Studio, which is by nature a multi-configuration build, and somebody uses the build configuration, then please replace this person and as a build engineer or send them to education to me or whatever. It's not good. Also in the code, don't do this. Because in a multi-configuration, this doesn't exist. As I said, it's a legacy. What you do is you pass the configuration. That's how you do it. And you use preset to make this nice consumable. And what you then do in your code where you need to, to decide based on the configuration you have, you use this uh, generator expression, where you open here a generator expression, and then we have the if part, and then we set the, the value for whatever it is. So if it matches this, we do this. If it matches this, if it matches this. We can even ma make source code and so on. So yeah, that's just how it is. Looks a little bit scary at the first time, but it's not, trust me. So <coughs> use build configurations, that's it. Now in this config, generate the expression. This is what I just had on the screen. If you love to hate CMake, they will not disappoint you. <laughs> but we are a C++ developer, we have no problems with these angel brackets. Huh? Do we, don't, we are not scared by them. And I said, it's, it's, it looks scary at the first part, but it's actually not. One more time. Here I said, compile options, warnings. Here is basically, I open the, the preset. Here is then the, the if thing. Here I can put the or in it. That I have one of those. And then at the end, we, 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 we do what, what, is, what is here, the last thing in the, in the generator expression. And if it's the, by, if it's to MSBC, we put other things here. So it's a little bit you need to get used to it, but it's just syntax. I mean. and, and you need to have, have it anyway if you're a library developer. Hopefully your library has this, because it makes the user of your code more happy if it does have this. And this is also a uh, generator expression if you have the build interface. We find this stuff in our source tree, otherwise in the install directory. Yeah, so learn the minimum if, you, if you're responsible for a build and, and, and use it. It looks scary, but it's, it's worth the effort. And I said, it's just syntax. We love it. It makes you an expert. OK, generation uh, versus build. So this is very good to, to CMake is not your build system. It has two phases. The first thing is the configuration and generation phase. And what it does is what you pass in as a generator. It generates Ninja files. It generates a Visual Studio project, it generates an Xcode project. If you understand this, you will have a easier access to CMake. It's not your build system. You still have the, 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 the build system under the hood that you are doing things for. And then what CMake does, it gives you a unified command line to call MS Build or Ninja or Xcode build on the platform you are. So it's, it's CMake as a build preset, preset name. That's then your command line. You don't need to know then the details for this various build system, but it helps to, to the mental model should, should be adjusted to this. OK, now let's look at dependencies. Oh, no. Uh, this, should, <laughs> this, should, this should be a lightning talk, but we request something, then I can, can go into this also. Warning, it's S error. This is a nice one. Use CMake for this. Don't set your compiler flags. There is CMake has built-in stuff. And you can set it in your, in your code, how it should be threaded. And then you have, it has a command line toggle for the configuration phase. So I, I put this default in my, in my uh, base preset. So the default is, of course, warnings is error. I want to have this. And when I do a refactoring and I change things, then I, I configure the things one time like this, compile no warning as error. And then I don't get this, oh, unused variable name stuff or whatever, what you get in the uh, refactoring stuff, this annoying stuff. So I can turn it on. And I don't need to mess around with, with internals of CMake and so on. The CI will always get the right stuff. So you cannot, not, you have a CI hopefully. Yeah. So do not use compiler flex to set the warning stuff. Use CMake, it will handle it awesome for you. 
The very same thing for the C++ version. Don't use uh, compiler flags. Let CMake handle it for you. We don't want to have this set explicit on each build target. Or worse, as an environment variable, see it seems flags. CMake has these, these setups where you can fine tune it if it requires the standard you give, if you want to allow extensions, and which standard it is. And you can do this for the C and C++ standard. Use this to set it. If you have something special, then you can set it on a, as a target property for the one things. Usually, you don't need this. The, the, the general stuff is good. If you're a library author, check if this has been set for you. You don't want to enforce this version you set as default version to the users of your. Your users might want to have a different version. Make it easy for them. And here the same like for warning. Let's see make to the compiler flag. It's, it's much more convenient. Always export compile commands. Even if you don't use it, just put it there. Somebody else will happily use it. <laughs> so uh, I mention it because there are people that don't put it there. So just put it there. Git ignore build directories. That's also hopefully useful. The easy way. So you can just write a file in the current build directory that says, hey, git ignore everything in this directory. And you don't need to mess around with git ignore or if you use a custom build directory for the moment. Oops, oops it accidentally added the whole debug build into the git tree. <laughs> it will not happen anymore with this setting. CMake as a scripting language. This is what we all want, right? <laughs> if you can't get enough CMake, you use it as a scripting language and you do it like this. And you call CMake with the P and to give it the script as an example, and it works even as a shebang, which is nice. And now that's actually useful because if you do something that's just on your computer, you probably know what is installed there. But if you do a library that people shall use over the internet, you don't know which Python version do they have. Do they have a Python version at all? And for the usual build operation, putting files to a place, reading something, CMake has a lot of things in build. So you can just say, hey, I'm in CMake. I call CMake for these tasks. I don't have any external dependencies. So that makes sense, believe it or not, sometimes. So for Visual Studio Code users, there is an awesome plugin, CMake Test Explorer, that puts all your CMake tests in this, in this test explorer. And it has you can select a test and say, run this test, or you can even start debug this test. And it's just kicked and away. It's really so convenient, comfortable. It's awesome. So if you use Visual Studio Code, uh, get for this plugin. Then also use today CMake. CMake is dated. It goes back to, I don't know how long, but 20 years probably, at least. Uh, I'm, I think I'm already 20 years. First, it was basically just you translate your make files into CMake, and it generates the make file, and that's what you, what you have, right? Before, hmm? Before that, a little bit. Yeah, it was even, even earlier. But for me, it was when KDE switched to CMake. I, I switched also my, all my stuff. So there is CMake 2, which was ancient CMake. Don't use this anymore. CMake 3, we had very, very long. And now, since half a year, year, we are in the CMake 4 era. And we don't know what's going to change with this. But things will become more, more structured and more modern in the usage and more helpful. So if you search for something, check the result of the answer. If your search engine gives you a Stack Overflow answer from 10 years ago, no, right? <laughs> don't look, look the next result. Invest a little bit more. And the same is for AI answers, right? The AIs unfortunately have a lot of this, this, this old stuff in there, and they generate awesome stuff, and it works sometimes even. But you don't want to have this for maintenance, because they don't understand themselves anymore. <laughs> so for simple cases, works. You can absolutely use it. For the not so simple cases, I have the theory we would need a more AI-friendly CMake or new build language description that ha has AI in there in the first place, citizen. Hey, how do I describe my build? That I get something generated that makes sense. And this works also then for extending and maintenance over years. So this would be, would be nice. Oh, and I have a final tip. Yeah, don't love to hate CMake. It, it's, it's fun, of course, but it will not make you happy. If you have to use it, it's pointless to complain. 
I mean, if it helps you to, to win, I'm for Brianna, I'm well champion and complaining, but I need this, okay? You probably have a different cultural background. You are not happy when you complain. You might take it serious. So if you have to use it, just use it or find somebody who solves the problems for you. If you don't have to use it, there are alternatives. Then just use something different. They are all awesome. We had a, a, a XMAC talk some years ago for better. It's on our YouTube channel. Maybe we will get a Basel talk from me in the near future. And if you want to talk about Mason or Build 2 or anything else, you're warm, uh, welcome to, to, to show us this build system that people get alternatives. And that's already the, the CMAC tips for the average user. Thank you.